For everyone who was worried that Quito, Rigor and Gomez wouldn't be able to play in the Champions League for us this season, you didn't have any reason to worry. See, I, we always had faith. Hello and welcome to Club 6, part 43 of Non-Leader Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the first leg of our first knockout round Champions League game. Away against Monaco, plus we're away against Real Betis in La Liga. Since you were last with me, it's been really rather delightful form again, um, including a quite stupendous number of goals from Jesus Perez. 28 goals from 24 starts in all competitions so far this season. 17 from 20 starts, uh, sorry, 17 from 18 starts in La Liga. It's fair to say this lad is having a decent season, still only 21 years old. He has now graduated to being an elite striker. No more of this wonder kid nonsense. And I think a proper 30 goal a season world class striker was probably the missing piece of the jigsaw. And he's just emerged from within our own ranks, which is marvellous stuff. The fact we picked him up as cheap as we did. Less than 10 million quid. I think that balances out some of the players I may have overspent on. If I if we win the Champions League this season, I will go through the the 18 players in the match day squad for the final and work out an average purchase price of the starting eleven. Uh, of the of the or of the starting eleven and of the eighteen. And I would suggest it will be an average purchase price of less than thirty million pounds, which to me seems like a bargain but what do i know i'm just an idiot who apparently bankrupts clubs even though i've never bankrupted a club in over 25 years of playing football manager right let's get in to this champions league game the first leg the away leg against monaco and this is the team we're putting out there and as you can see we have our shiny new superstar central defensive partnership in there we were able to register three new players at the end of january regardless of whether they'd previously played in the competition this season or not so we registered Quito, rigor and gomez who came back from his loan to replace markovic who we sold in january i think i told you we sold him in january just check that there weren't any transfers that went through towards the end of January. I think you were aware of all these already. So, this is the team for the Monaco game. We've got Zielinski in goal. A back four of Ryback, Quito, Rigor and Zerdic. With Ramos and Atz in midfield. Ruiz, Lorenzo and Gould behind Perez. That is my best 11. They are the best 11 players at this football club. And hopefully they, uh, hopefully they can do the business for us in the Champions League this season. I look at that 11 and I can't see anywhere where we can improve it. I think I said this on yesterday's episode, possibly if you gave me £200 million, I could do a better attacking midfielder than Lorenzo. But we couldn't do it on the cheap. It, such a thing does not exist. And uh, I'm very, very happy with this team now. The squad could do with some strength in depth, maybe. For example, don't know who this fella is. Patrick Weiss, not any good, is he? He's on the bench, just because Europe. But, eh, we're not going to worry about strength in depth. We've got a good first team. Let's just hope none of them get injured. That that feels like the cue for probably Perez, Quito, maybe Ruiz to all get injured in this match. That would be my guess if I had to put money on it. Uh, but let's get stuck in and hopefully come out come away with a good result. I expect a good result from this fur leg, first leg. Fur leg from this first leg. Get out there. Grab a win. That seems reasonable to me because it's a special occasion. I do have my football manager, Trequatista mug as well. Old branding, apologies. In fact, it doesn't actually say football manager on it anywhere. But they sent me it. I think this, this is old football manager stock, I think. Hmm. Delightful as well. Hopefully, using such a mug will give us luck. And we'll go and say, oh, that's not... That, that would look like Garces spelt the way of the one that we had at Fulham. That's not him, surely. All these years later, now playing for Monaco. Um, we're 1-0 down as well, but I'm more concerned. I don't want to click on him because Edison Gar says that's him, isn't it? We bought him so many years ago thinking he was going to be the next best thing in the universe. Looks like his career's actually turned out OK. If I remember, we'll have a look at him after the match, but we all know the rules. We can't click on him during the match or else he's guaranteed to score, but he looks like he's done all right for himself. Ended up at Monaco, presumably on a big pile of cash. 
playing in the Champions League knockout rounds. It's a bit of a step up from Fulham. Um, right, Ramos. So Lorenzo, we could do with an away goal now. I know it's still only the first half, but it would be pleasant. Perez slots Atz in. That was a beautiful pass from Perez, and Atz should have scored. Worryingly, it's the Champions League knockout, knockout rounds, and Atz is already on a yellow card in the first half. We should just not play him in these games. I know people are going to say, "Tell him to ease off tackles." It's not how it's not how we roll around these parts. If he eases off tackles, he's not the same player. Admittedly, he's more likely to stay on the pitch. But we want him to be our nutter in midfield. What we don't want is to be 2-0 down against a team I thought we'd cruise past in the first knockout round of the Champions League. Because the what big problem with building a wonder team like this one, and this isn't this isn't a whole load of negativity. We're not going there yet. We'll see how the second half pans out. But if we were to get knocked out in the first knockout round with this wonder team we've put together, I worry we wouldn't be able to keep them. The likes of Atz, Zielinski, Perez probably. They're going to go and force through moves to Europe's proper elite to play in the latter stages of the Champions League. So there is quite a lot of pressure on this match. I think I'm going to get aggressive, actually. Show me something different in this second half. We need aggression, and I'm already pondering if we do manage to turn this tie around and carry on in the Champions League this season, is it maybe time for a return to the 4-3-3 and get Moreno back in the team ahead of Lorenzo and just play that, certainly in the away legs, play a more defensively solid system. But here's Ruiz, and there's Atz, and both of them missed. About 35 goals between them already this season, and they can't get a shot on target between the two of them. Lorenzo now trying to earn his place in the team for future away legs in the Champions League. Didn't do much to convince me there, did he? Gould plays it into Atz. Atz is trying to generate another shooting opportunity, and this time whistles just wide. At least we're actually having some shots now. The only problem is they're all missing. We've had one shot on target in the entire match so far. Monaco have created two clear-cut chances. We've not created any. It's not just that they've been more clinical than us. They are utterly outclassing us at the moment. They're beating us for every stat. And this is absolutely not what I was expecting from this tie. I was so convinced spending all that money in January... It was going to be relatively easy to go and win the Champions League. This is this is a bit of a bringing us back down to earth of a bump situation here, I think. Right, here is Atz. Again, trying to generate something. Tries to play Gould in, but doesn't find him. And I think we are going to have to make some substitutions and change things up because for whatever reason, this system and this group of players that are top of the league in Spain, better than Real Madrid, better than Barcelona, better than Atletico Madrid, we're not as good as Monaco. And that baffles me because they play in the French League. And that's not as good as the Spanish League. It's supposed to be a one-team league. Hmm. Maybe the French League is better than I think. I've just thrown £200 million at Marseille. And now Monaco are obviously a good side as well. Oh, this is, this is a problem. We're 3-0 down. We've got to grab a couple of goals now to give ourselves an opportunity in the second leg even. Um, I'm tempted. It seems like a stupid thing to do, but I think we just made the wrong, or I made the wrong decision to begin with. So let's try and rectify it and go to the system we probably should have been using. And then Ruiz. We haven't got Garcia on the bench. I guess Abraham. We haven't got Korkmaz either. There's a couple of players who are injured. I mentioned strength in depth. And I'm going to make a triple substitution. I'm afraid of him getting himself sent off, so we're going to do that as well. And... Oh, I'm not feeling good right now. Demand more. Playing a different system. And it already, already it looks like such a weaker side. Oh, this has been a disaster. Let's just grab an away goal. An away goal here, and we can hopefully paper over the cracks and... Do the business back at our place. In luckily, we've got like a month to come up with a plan. It's not like the latter stages of the competition where you're playing both legs in a week. We should be able to recover with some form and some confidence before we have to play them again. But our two hundred million pound centre back partnership has been torn apart by a striker we bought for three hundred grand at Fulham ten years ago. Right, we have an opportunity to grab a goal here to save some face. It's Perez, and he scores. Thank goodness. Goodness, goodness me. 
Right, 3-1 is not a disaster. If we could somehow grab a second and make it 3-2, then I'm going to be feeling very, very confident and it will feel like a get-out-of-jail-free card. The best right-back in the world is having a terrible game. Gravosti, be ready to play in the second leg, son. Goodness me. Right, 3-1, we're not going to panic. <sighs> My word. Aggression, far from pleased. We have work to do before this second leg. But before we go and do our work, let's just have a look at this fella, see what kind of career he's had. 29 years old now. Turned into a uh, pretty decent striker in the end, hasn't he? My word, has he turned into a pretty decent striker. So he actually stayed at so £675,000 we paid for him at Fulham. Remember, back when I used to bargain hunt and they turned into world-class players eventually. He did stay at Fulham for a long time before eventually going to Monaco for £53 million. And as we just saw in that game, he's doing all right for them, isn't he? Look how much he's earning. There is money in France, says the man who just sent 200 million to France. Well, what better way to bring ourselves back to form than a local derby against a team in a relegation battle? That's That's got to be the thing, hasn't it? And we're rotating a little bit. Not as much as we maybe could. Um... Keto and Rigor apparently don't need rotation. They just play forever. Um, and we're not changing anything in the attacking midfield three. More because of necessity than uh, than than choice. The players still recovering from injuries. The likes of Garcia, um, Atz is now injured. Benko's still injured, etc. etc. Korkmaz just returning from injury. So we kind of have to leave those guys in. But where we can, we've rotated. So Gomez comes in in goal. Bruce at left back, Gravosti at right back, O'Neill and Moreno in midfield, and Abraham, I think this is his first start of the season, up front. It is his first start of the season, but he did score relatively recently, coming off the bench against Espanyol, which was a game, I think that was a game we won really rather convincingly. Where's the schedule? Um, Espanyol, 4-0. I mean, we've had, some, we've had some big wins recently, but that is a proper blot on the copy, but we haven't lost a football match since Celta Vigo back in November. Remember, though, in the group stage of the Champions League, we lost the first match and ended up topping our group. Perhaps by losing the first match of the knockout rounds, we will end up topping that group too, which I think translates to winning the Champions League. It's still on, boys and girls. And on Monday, we'll prove it by winning the second leg. But for now, let's just win the local derby and make sure we stay top of the league. Um, so passionately say... Um, we have the chance to move in, move into top spot. We were top. Have we dropped off the top of the league as well by losing a Champions League game? Real Madrid have got secret points again. Keep your run going. I don't like this. How has this happened? They get. I swear they get secret points. Go back, rewind the episode. At the start of the episode, we were top of the league. They must have played earlier today. It's unacceptable. Um, if we do win, though, we will go to back top of the league then again. Because I guess they've already played. Um, so if we win, we go two points ahead of them again. Or is it one point? One point, isn't it? I knew that. Right, Ruiz, who is probably in need of a rest. He's played just about every game in all competitions this season. Every time I've had the opportunity to rest him. Uh, it's Well, I haven't had the opportunity to rest him. Because every time I would want to, either Garcia's been injured, or Korkmaz has been injured, or Abraham's been injured. Anyone who could play out there and sort of deputise for him... He's been a little bit injury prone this year, so Ruiz has probably played more games than anybody in the squad, which he did start the first half of the season was amazing. He has gone off the boil a little bit in the second half of the season, probably because he's shattered. But hopefully we can get some rest into him before we get into the business end of the season and then let him play himself back into some form again. It's nice having Garcia on his way back from injury ready to slot in if need be. Remember, Man City wanted Garcia for 50 million plus last summer. Garcia was a starter in the Spain team that won the World Cup last summer. We have got options on left on the left wing. It's just whenever we've tried to use them this year, there hasn't really been the opportunity to do it. Uh, but we are 1-0 up in this game thanks to a resurgent Paul O'Neill 
That's his second goal in about three matches, I think. He's suddenly turning into a decent midfielder again. I think he's spotting the potential opportunity that might be ahead of him if Atz continues to just be a psychopath. Remember, O'Neill is still young. I think he's still only 23 years old. He came in very, very young. He was still a teenager when he won the World Cup with Scotland and we brought him in for big money. The first of the big money signings, really. And perhaps he, perhaps, you know, perhaps... It's taken him three years to get his head right after his big money move to Spain at such a young age, after becoming a World Cup winner at such a young age. He had that great first season for us, and we just haven't seen the best of him since until these last five or six games, when he is starting to look very, very good again. So just maybe we might be seeing a return to the Paul O'Neill that we know is in there somewhere. But there's our £70 million captain getting into the Derby spirit and getting himself sent off right at the start of the second half. So we're just going to shuffle some things around in this midfield. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. And it'll all be fine. Promise. Oh, yikes. Um, right, let's let's praise them. We're 1-0 up when we're down to 10 men. Half an hour to go against a team who are having an awful season. They're down in 19th place, four points clear of safety. They're just having it. For a team that, at times, since we've been here in Spain, they've been pushing us for Champions League spots. That is a great pass to find Ruiz in loads of space. And five matches ago, Ruiz scores there. But is Moreno getting sent off as well now? For goodness sake. For goodness sake. You know, do you ever get that feeling the season's just falling apart in front of your eyes? Oh, my word. <laughs> what do you do here? What do you do here? Um, no, that's stupid. We just have to put him in the middle like that. <laughs> there you go. Paul O'Neill, you are the midfield. That's I know that's not what we should have done. We should have done something about the wingers and... If I had wide midfielders, if they were a thing that existed in my world, I could bring... I guess I could take Ruiz off, bring Ramos on, put Lorenzo back into the middle. This is probably more sensible, isn't it? Still pretty dumb. But, you know, we've got nine men. What am I supposed to do? What are my other options here, people? Um, right, you can be that. You can stay as that. I feel like in the circumstances, Abraham probably isn't the man to be up front. So I think I'm going to do that. Just to have someone up there who's going to hold the ball up a little bit better. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say to him. Concentrate. Stop getting sent off, you idiots. <laughs> the ball's just bouncing around in the penalty area. Go, oh, I forgot Gomez was in goal. This is a bit of a... Uh, Test of Gomez's met. And if we had Zielinski in goal, I'd be super confident. Gomez, I don't think you've even seen him play yet. But he's obviously been here for quite a while now. He had that season on loan. Then the season after we signed him and we sent him out on loan. But I think this is the first time you've seen anything of Gomez. And he needs to put in a performance. We've got 10 minutes to cling on to this game. I know I'm still on positive. I am aware of that. But I ain't changing it. We're going to bring on Serdic. Just for energy. Gravosti's struggling a little bit and I, I don't know do I drop back no I shouldn't drop back because then I'm going to invite them on to me we want to we want to have a little bit of release of pressure by pushing the ball forward a little bit imagine if you're a Real Betis fan in this situation you're in a relegation battle you've got your big local rivals down to 10 men and you still can't beat them it must this this must be where you know this is the season you get relegated. If we manage to hold on here, this is a I mean that is a proper sign of some character amongst the nine players who managed to stay on the pitch anyway. Um we got away with that. You were poor out there. They were poor, but we did get away with it and we've ground out a win. And cliche bingo cards at the ready, boys and girls. If you I don't even know the cliche. Great. If you win when you're rubbish. That's a good sign, isn't it? I think it was probably put more succinctly than that in the past. But we do end the episode back at the top of the league, where we belong. And in Monday's video, we will do the second leg of Monaco, Hatafe in the league, and hopefully 
Hopefully it'll feel less like everything's falling apart on Monday. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.